Interesting. Development. Alrighty. Hang on. Here we go. Turn that layer off. And ah, I'm officially back. Welcome, welcome. Um, obviously, um, this is me jumping back into using Streamlabs rather than just OBS. Uh, I actually find this uh, this platform a little bit easy to use uh, by comparison, mostly because of the multi-stream options. I can actually be live on both YouTube and on Twitch simultaneously without too much hassle and um, I've got those cool little overlays, so, um, I'm not going to sort of yammer on too long about, uh, where I've been, because, um, if you're just tuning in, I have been on a nine month break from live streaming and I'm only just getting back into it now so um, yeah uh, bear with me because I am a little bit rusty and um, it is like riding a bike you know you never really forget how to do it but you miss driving a car pretty quickly when you <laughs> find yourself out on the open road and you're struggling up a hill that was funnier in my head obviously but um yeah if i'm having any issues with the uh with the stream particularly with the audio please 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 feel free to jump into the chat and let me know because yeah I'm kind of working somewhat blind here. Well, not so much blind, but uh, definitely a little bit deaf. But anyway, I digress. So I picked uh, this particular hour to go live. Um, Mostly because uh, the majority of my audience, both on Twitch and on YouTube, tend to be in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the English speaking part of the world. So since that is um, not really the part of the world that I'm from. How you doing? I'm in, I'm in Australia. Uh, I figured given the, the world clock, I would go live at sort of, uh, I guess late in the day. For, for myself, but, uh, you know, at a reasonable time for the United States, Canada, and Britain, and anywhere else, like, that isn't necessarily 
in my neck of the woods that uh, is also predominantly English speaking. That obviously uh, doesn't include New Zealand, who is, uh, I think it's like they're two hours, two hours ahead, I think. I don't know exactly. But yeah, this is um, the official proper return of Sketch Jam. So I'll be back uh, doing these more often. Because they're pretty fun, they're pretty laid back, and they're honestly very easy for me to do. And at the end of it, I've got a very cool piece of fan art that I can later post up on my art station page and obviously my other social media accounts Like, I've never been quite as inspired as I have been recently to just create content. Like, I don't normally, um, spend this long just sort of procrastinating. And I honestly don't think that procrastinating is really a thing. I think that's just sort of a manifestation of a guilt complex, really. I think how we spend our time is um, how we spend our time, you know? But having like, you know, a bit more perspective on what's happening is um, always important. Yeah, I'm just going to find this and turn it off for just a minute. find my picture references I love how amazingly flowy her hair is in this. Like I get their extensions and stuff, but 
Man, so pretty. Getting this funky pattern as accurate as I can. You know, I probably should preface this by saying I have not actually seen this movie. And for the time being, I don't really have any intention to either. Because I haven't been to the movies in ages. Like, even before the pandemic hit, like, my desire to get in the car, go to my local, like, cinema, buy popcorn, a drink, and just sort of sit there gazing up at what effectively is like the guy in town with the biggest TV who's you know making me pay for the privilege to watch said giant TV But I honestly think because I want to make this channel into more of a, uh, not just an art, like not just a place to showcase my art and what I can do creatively, but also like a commentary channel for, you know, movie reviews and whatnot. Like I think what I will start doing from now on is I will, you know, do like movie date night where I just go out and uh, see what's playing. Like I'm not particularly interested in going to like sort of the, the massive chain movie theater because um, I would essentially just be going on my own. And um, I don't know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, like, movie date by myself. And I'm not particularly keen on watching these these particular productions on my phone either like there there is something about you know watching a movie that was you know made by talented professionals it was meant to be consumed in like a theater with other audience members as like a shared, very human experience. And I think that part of the movie going like moment has been lost for a lot of people, not just myself. And like, obviously I'm just speaking for myself here, but even before the pandemic, like I think the last movie I saw in the movie theaters was um, I think it was either 
Endgame or it was um, I don't know it's either Infinity War or Endgame like and I was honestly a bigger bigger fan of on, give me a minute Yeah, I was um, a much bigger fan of Infinity War than I was of Endgame. And I, like looking back, like I've got some pretty nice memories of sort of that time in my life. Where things were like actually going pretty well. And things are still like, you know, bubbling along with uh, you know, a fair amount of regularity. So let's start working in some basic color. Now I do these sort of in between my other commitments but essentially what I want to have within the next uh, I've got about a bit over 20 days until the next convention and I've got a, a series of uh, jobs I want to have completed by then and before then and um, this includes but is not limited to like t-shirt designs and banners and posters and all kinds of stuff so I've, I've got to be uh, very much on the ball when it comes to that kind of stuff. She does look a uh, tad sunburned here, but that's an easy fix. So Father's Day is the next I guess you could, it's not really an official holiday, it's more of a I mean honestly it, sh it should be a holiday. I think any sort of human event that um, celebrates life and the beauty and the mystery of it um, really deserves like more recognition than a non-public holiday event. Okay. 
because life is life is pretty short and it's very precious. And so many of us learn that too late. And uh, yeah, it's definitely one of those things. So this will obviously be a shorter one than normal. I want to keep this to just a uh, just a quick hour. And I'll get down the uh, the base colours. First, before moving on to... Getting this particular shade of high visibility yellow correct is a lot harder than it looks because it does trick your eyes. Cool, I'm just gonna turn that layer off and let's get stuck into the inking. So I reckon I can uh, knock 
knock this one over. Give it about an hour. Hour ten if I'm lucky. It's like what I'm... Hey, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I um... Just had a moment of uh... Dead air concentration. It's like when I'm trying to uh, slow down and find a particular address when I'm driving. You ever do that? You just sort of, you turn off the music or the radio in your car so you can concentrate on like, you know, finding where you're supposed to go and <laughs> it's a similar similar thing with uh, drawing I find like I'll just I'll sort of go into what's called the zone and I'll just yeah I'll briefly go quiet for a For a few seconds. Like to be able to just sort of constantly talk while drawing. It's uh, essentially a skill that I've been honing since the uh, early 2000s when I uh, first started drawing caricatures for a living. And um, yeah, just sort of went from there. How is everybody tonight? It's a... Uh, it's always an interesting... few weeks when you notice the uh... The season's changing. Like we're just coming into springtime here in Australia, and uh, I, I seriously, I love, I love the springtime. But I know we're in for an absolute scorcher this summer. Like I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to be like I 
whether it's going to be a a dry heat. I hope it's a dry heat. I mean, even though I am not a fan of hazard reduction burning so we don't get bushfires, um, yeah. I'll take that over a muggy night any day of the year. And like, Australia by and large, like the major cities here are built with like some of the most devastatingly hot, awful summers in mind. I, I, I get that there are places around the world that are hotter. But there, there are just, you know, parts of this country that never really experience a cold day like ever. Like particularly up north. Like the more I um, sort of watch YouTube videos usually done by like Americans who've moved here or just foreigners in general from like Europe and stuff. And they talk about like how different they find Australia. The, the more I appreciate just how special and unique the country that I'm so incredibly used to and admittedly a little bored with at this point really is. Because, like, we really struggle here to find any significant sort of, like, emergency-style problem. So we just sort of invent stuff to get sort of vaguely passionate about. Like, it honestly was not that long ago when our Prime Minister and, like, you know, the leaders of this country were tossing up the idea of a national public holiday if the women's soccer team representing our country won. And... I'm all for like, you know, taking a day off for something like for a truly unique and interesting like moment in history. But the other part of me is just like, are you out of your mind? Like this country already celebrates what I would honestly regard as way too many publicly mandated days off and to throw another one on top of that, especially when cost of living is just getting like jokingly unreasonable. Yeah. Like, fortunately, you know, that particular idea really didn't have any legs. Because, you know, our girls basically lost the subsequent matches that were put in. Like, we did exceptionally well and... You know, Sam Kerr and her ragtag team of uh, honestly pretty athletic ladies have secured like
their spot in history. Like in all likelihood, um, quite a few of the girls that played this time around will retire, you know, to get married and settle down and maybe raise a family. And others will, you know, go on to have careers as, uh, you know, sports commentators and all that fun stuff. be remembered as like you know on the level of like a David Beckham or a Lionel Messi or even a Diego Maradona I sincerely doubt it it's like Soccer really isn't Australia's, like, game. Like, in terms of, you know, most watched team sports, we have plenty of football-style games that... Um, are honestly just more dynamic and fun to watch. Like, I get that soccer's cool, but if you're not from a predominantly, like, European or South American background, I think you'll honestly struggle to find any kind of, like, lasting value in watching a bunch of grown men and also grown women play a sport that is really meant for kids. I remember when I was sort of into soccer and I realized quickly that my favorite version of soccer was uh, indoor soccer. And not even like professional indoor soccer, like just sort of mucking around with the oversized tennis ball like some of my best and fondest memories growing up was like going to this indoor recreation place with my brother and yeah we just played we just mucked around. You know, we, we got rid of all that sort of bottled up nervous energy that I, I was particularly, you know, needed to get out of my system because I just found school just 
mostly stifling. Like there are honestly some places that I remember that I would love to go back to. There's something about like the great indoors that I just love. There's something wonderfully comfortable, comfortable, comforting about just not having to go outside, not having to, you know, worry about any of that kind of stuff. Like these were simpler times, obviously, like the early 90s was honestly just an extension of the late 80s. And now the, uh, the early 90s are 30 years in the rear view mirror. 1993 was 30 years ago. And here I am talking about the 80s and how awesome they were, like it was yesterday. And the strange thing about it is because like that, those decades are still like looked at with such a degree of sort of warm fuzzies and, you know, fun stuff that it kind of counteracts the bleakness and the interesting thing too is um, the early 2000s are now looked at as like the the decade for nostalgia, like the new, the new upcoming decade for nostalgia. And one day I may even say the same thing about this particular decade. Like I've already, you know, pointed out that It won't be long until we look back at the early 2000s kind of in the same way we looked at like the early 80s and even the early 90s with a combination of awe, disgust, cringe and a desperate want to get back to it. Because we are living kind of in a historical turning point where technology is so good and so convenient 
and so all-encompassing that we may actually see real actual Terminators walking down the street one day. You know, I, I watched this clip where this news reporter was having a very frank and very free-flowing conversation with a robot head sitting on a desk and I was like, I wonder how much that thing is to buy on like Amazon or something like that. You know, this sort of moment that sci-fi horror movies have been warning <laughs> the general population for like decades now that, you know, the sentient android is closer than we think. And, you know, to a degree, absolutely. Like, you can only, you can feed only so much information into a machine learning program before it figures out literally everything about how humans think and act and react to whatever stimuli, you know. If, if we have like CCTV cameras that can pick up the faintest, most insignificant micro expression usually through like a lower face obscuring mask, then how many like up our sleeves tricks do we still have when the robots literally know everything and can not just beat us in chess, but all the things it's like one man's fascinating thought experiment is another man's episode of black mirror So I decided to skip going to the gym tonight because ah, I've still got the muscle soreness. So I was thinking about doing sort of a, uh, I guess you could call it like one of those progress fitness blog things. But I'm not like too worried about how my progress has come along. And frankly, I, I don't have the... Uh, forward thinking um, free time to just take a photo of myself every day in the same position you know I was watching this other thing about uh, video game speedrunners and this one was about a guy who was the world record holder for Ninja Gaiden or Gaiden? Is it Gaiden or Gaiden? I think it's Ninja Gaiden, but it's spelt with an A. Anyway, so he 
He was the world record holder for Ninja Gaiden 2 on the, I think it's the NES. And then he lost that title because he sort of decided, nah, I'm good. And, you know, sort of chose to go into semi-retirement and sort of rest on his laurels for a bit. And then somebody, you know, subsequently, you know, beat him at what he thought was a game that could not have any more, like, I guess you could say juice squeezed out of it. Like, because it's essentially what, like, speedrunners do is they take a video game usually from a certain era where um, they have a lot of glitches, they have a lot of like areas that are very easy to explore and because they're they're mostly two-dimensional like pixels and um, you know there's not a lot of uh, options for Ooh. movement variety um, they can really sort of hone in on how best to get the best possible times on these games and it's look it's honestly fascinating I mean I wouldn't do it myself I mean I've, I've become like quite obsessed with some video games in the past and I've just sunk like thousands of hours into you know trying to be the very best like no one ever was but um, yeah I'm kind of now at the age where it's quick matches or nothing for me like I can't do the competitive like, I was never, like, super into the whole ranking system because it just feels like I'm never going to get that time back. Oh, hey, um, sure, if you like. Um, what is my Discord? Good question. <laughs> um, I haven't used my Discord page in a long time. Um, give me one minute. I will just check. Because uh, I can't remember what it was. It's just called like Ed Dyer's server. Um, so I, I think you can find it. Um, I'm seriously a noob to uh, like Discord. Like I barely use it. I'm, I'm on like, you know, I'm on my friend's uh, Discord, but um, I barely use, I barely use uh, Discord on theirs as well. But uh, yeah, you're welcome to... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to um, expand the network and see what see what uh, see what out see what is out there.
but uh, yeah, I will. What what I'll do um, going forward is I will um, I will post a link to my Discord in you know my uh, my bio. So uh, I, I've got to update a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, because I've got a, I'm sort of playing a lot of catch up at the moment when it comes to sort of building, building out this part of my online presence. And yeah, if I can get some help along the way, that would be fantastic. I am very much a solo act at the moment, which, you know, suits me just fine. Uh, I like, sort of working for myself. It does get a little bit overwhelming though, not gonna lie. Uh, you know, I've gotta maintain the, uh, the rest of the business during the day. And I wanna keep, oh, just gone to the uh, one hour mark and I am pretty happy with how this one's gone so let's uh, flip on the let's fix up <laughs> yeah she's looking a bit manky at the moment so um, you'll have to forgive me for that I was a bit slapdash when it came to Applying the color. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to looking too like old. Cause she's a classic beauty is our Margot. And she deserves better than that. Might sort of reduce these sort of more harsh lines. Because she's supposed to be Barbie, not Isma from Emperor's New Groove. talking about before yeah the um uh, the speed running when it comes to video games like this guy here um, what he decided to do honestly inspired me in a way like he really, really, really wanted to get this world record back. So, and he couldn't figure out how this this other guy, who was, I think he's over in Japan, was able to just like knock him out of the top spot with like such ease. And 
And um, yeah, so what he ended up doing was um, he decided to stream every day until he won. And he streamed a for nearly a year and I think six months. I'd have to look it up to, you know, get the exact numbers, but it was something just like pure masochism, just like, did he not have anything else in his life that required his attention? Like how... You, you have to be able to allocate time for that for that kind of very you know time dependent tasks that you've uh, put before yourself. But yeah, he, he ended up doing it and, you know, more power to him. I think that's, that's fantastic. Because, you know, we are like naturally competitive. We don't like losing. We do like seeing if we can break records and push limits and... not just win, but destroy. That's why, that's why um, when you watch uh, track and field contests and swimming competitions in the Olympic games, like, they're shaving off like ten, like hundredths of a second when it comes to, you know, performance. Like everything has to be sort of a make or break. Like the Paralympics and the Winter Olympics and... I mean, the Paralympics I find also fascinating because just like as I mentioned earlier with the whole like rise of AI, like seeing those runners with now what looks like, you know, Deus Ex Machina implants, like I'm genuinely impressed when I see like amputee runners because they basically now have cybernetics, like, real cool looking like honestly robot leg level cybernetics I, I genuinely think if you've ever seen those um, the spatula feet thing that is so cool and they used to have these uh, style of um, what are they called stilts that resembled like werewolf legs And you'd wear them and not only would you increase your height, but also like your ability to run and leap because these particular stilts um, had like full on like, like these really cool like bowed springs behind them. And yeah, that was just amazing. And I think, I don't know, they probably ended up being like outlawed because... Somebody got hurt or like, you know, decided to leap. 
across like a raging river and ended up snapping their neck or something horrendous like that. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, so I'll make a few mental notes for the next stream to advertise my Discord. Like I set it up last year and I've honestly done nothing with it. Because, you know, life just gets in the way. I guess that's not really an excuse though. Like, life gets in the way is just sort of a, another version of it is what it is. And even that particular phrase has always bugged me. It's like, oh, it is what it is. Okay. just said whatever like we used to back in the 90s and I would have you know totally agreed but yeah uh, I think I'll keep streaming I really sort of you know I rushed through it and I was got very impatient for myself and I didn't really um, have any rhyme or reason and to to an extent I still kind of don't like as slick as this particular production looks, I am mostly flipped behind every single stream that I do. It's one of the main reasons why I don't live here or it's just honest. It's been a slow grind for that too. Like I initially sort of stumbled upon like some pretty decent levels of success a couple of months ago. Like one of my shorts did absolute gangbusters. Like you ever post, like you ever just sort of post something and it just goes viral and you weren't expecting it to and you just think, oh my God. This is how like the big crowd is must feel. But after a while, it honestly, like, you know, the weeks went by and it was still just like, it was just this amazing phenomenon of a, of a run. And then it just, just sort of slowly dissipated and came eventually to a screeching halt. Like it went from doing like thousands of views a day to hundreds of views a day to tens of views a day to essentially nothing. And 
And I discovered pretty quickly, like, the idea of, uh, of evergreen content is kind of a tricky one on a regular basis. Like, if it's not, um, then, yeah, it's evergreen, but it's definitely a bonsai tree at that point. It'll grow, but it'll grow very slowly. Not only do I want to like reach my first thousand subscribers, but it would also be cool to get that four thousand watch hours as well. And these things all take time. You gotta do it like an amazing job. So the sequel to the Joker, the Joker movie looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. Got uh, little Stephanie Germanota as Harley Quinn. to uh, like name drop here but um, clients showed up forming later just kind of just wandering through and very glamorous very small very pretty as well Like there, there is something about when you see a famous person in real life and you weren't expecting to see them, that kind of like makes you do a bit of a double take. And that's happened. Um, and I did speak to Yahoo Serious. Um, that's. Uh, 
he hasn't been like active in any real capacity as a movie star for a very long time. But yeah, he was big in the 80s. Not so much from, uh, what's it called? He's from that lifestyle show, Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, country music, singer, songwriter, Sophie Monk, who was in a short-lived girl band, and now she does like, sort of, she's got a TV hosting around the streets. And, uh, who else? Jessica Mowboy. Uh, she performed live. Uh, who else? Um, John Travolta. He came and visited. I think he, he was like flying a plane. Like he'd sort of landed in Sydney. Super friendly guy. Like he had sort of fans coming up to him all the time asking to get selfies with him and like he totally obliged and like you know very personable very like very smiley gentlemanly sort of dude um i saw uh what's her name vanessa williams uh, when I was in the States, she was just like wandering through the uh, uh, domestic airport. I can't remember which airport it was, um, but it was a long time ago. Um, Kurt Angle, the wrestler from WWE, he was just at a lunch in. Um, he was on my flight to Perth. So yeah, I've sort of like had these sort of, I guess, casual run-ins. Oh, who else? I was doing a gig at the Four Seasons and Tom Segura, the comedian, was there. And I didn't realize he was in the country until I got on the same elevator as him. And I'm just like looking across and I'm going, he looks like somebody who I should know. And it's a weird moment because potentially mistaking him for somebody else. Because you ever see like people who look like famous people and they aren't that and you end up getting like a selfie with somebody who just sort of happens to resemble like a famous person. Because there are quite a lot of very convincing lookalikes out there who, you know, either do it professionally or just fortunate slash unfortunate enough to look like a famous person. So I'm always cautious whenever I sort of encounter somebody who I think I should know, but I'm never quite sure. But yeah, I think from now on, the next time I uh, I'll run into somebody famous, I'll at least say hi. Like, I don't really get, like, starstruck or anything like that. I'm just like, oh, that person's here.
Because you can very much do like the whole fly in the wall thing. With not a lot of problems. <sighs> anyway, uh, that seems like a good time to wrap up for tonight. I will um, come back and finish this one off at a later time. Uh, thank you very much everyone who to, chose to uh, check out what I'm doing here. Um, very much appreciated, particularly Evac Howard. Thank you once again for showing interest in my Discord. I hope you were able to find it. If not, I will uh, post a link uh, to it at a later point when I get a chance to. But yeah, um, I will be back uh, again on Thursday Sydney time. And until